Well, um, let's start by, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Joe, Joe Becker, and I'm an addict. Um, I'm, uh, I'm kind of from all over the place. I was born in Memphis, um, moved to North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Florida, and now Utah. Um, yeah, it's me. Okay. Um, Joe, what brings you to Recovery Day today? Um, I'm in treatment right now, and they had it as one of their activities that we could do for the day, and I thought it'd be pretty cool. I've never done anything like this on such a large scale. You know, it had so many people in recovery, so it's really cool to see so many like-minded people um, everywhere I look, you know? It's amazing. Yeah. How does it feel to be a part of such a large community? Um, it feels pretty good because at least in my experience, like as far as, uh, you know, being an addict, um, there's this feeling of like being alone, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like when I'm out there using, like it just feels like I'm alone and then you come into recovery and you meet all these people and you realize you're not alone, you know what I mean? And so it's a really good feeling. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's a different feeling. Yeah. So, yeah. I can relate to that mm -hmm. also. Um, what, what, how do you define recovery? Um, I don't think that it's really, I mean, yeah, drugs are a big part of it, obviously, because that's what got me here, but I think that it's more than just quitting drugs, you know what I mean? I think it's, yeah. the coolest thing that I like about recovery is that you have an opportunity to grow as a person, and, um, really like look at yourself you know and I feel like a lot of people don't have the opportunity in life you know so yeah. I'm like grateful that I have the opportunity to grow and like look at myself and correct my mistakes yeah. and um, it's a beautiful thing you know yeah what's the biggest blessing or the greatest thing that you've gained from recovery um, um, I mean I can be a good father you know um, and I've been in active addiction and long-term sobriety with my daughter, so it's been like, you know, good and bad, but at the same time, like I was saying, like I can look at what I'm doing wrong and correct it, you know what I mean? And I, yeah. yeah, it's great. And I think the other blessing is my family, you know, because for the longest time, like they didn't trust me, they didn't even know me anymore, you know what I mean? Like they questioned my love for them. Um, but recently, I lost my father last week, and um, it's been really hard, you know, because he's he was battling cancer for a long time, mm -hmm. and he wanted me to get better, um, and he'd get mad at me, you know what I mean, because he thought that anger would maybe give me motivation, but then, like, every time I'd go to treatment, he'd be like, you know, we'll get it this time, and we'll get it this time, and he was so supportive. And uh, I flew out here to Utah. Like I said, I'm currently in treatment. I flew out here and um, like two weeks ago, and I ended up getting arrested in the airport for public intoxication and stuff. And the, the last conversation I had with him was like him yelling at me. And then, um, but then he called me back and was like apologized and was just like, I just want you and your brother, because my brother struggles with addiction too, so yeah. I just want you and your brother to have a good life, you know? Um, and that was the last time I talked to him. Like I got to treatment and uh, I called them, like I went to treatment, I spent the night in jail and then went to treatment the next day. And when I got there, I called my mom, they're out to eat and there's all this background noise. So I just kind of wanted to let them alone. They just got done moving closer to my brother and um, so I just kind of was like all right I'll call you guys tomorrow and I called in the morning and my dad was um, in a coma mm -hmm. so my mom said he went to a coma so um, but at the same time and then he passed away a few days later but at the same time like I know like she told me that his dying wishes for me to like get sober you know yeah and uh, I don't think it's a coincidence that like he held on until the day I got the treatment you know what I mean and, uh, and then the, one of the techs or the behavioral health technicians of the treatment knocked on my door at like seven in the morning last Tuesday and um, was like, you gotta call your mom. So I was like, yeah, I mean, I already knew what would happen. And I, um, I called her and she's like, your dad has no blood pressure, like he's on his way out and stuff. And 
uh, she's like, I want you to talk to him, you know? Like, even wow. though he couldn't hear me, so I said a bunch of stuff. And, you know, that it was like, I, you know, that I, like, I was happy, it didn't have to be a pain anymore. And, you know, that I tell stories back to my daughter and all this stuff. And, yeah. Um, and then she called back 10 minutes later and he died. So it's like, wow. that's another coincidence that, I mean, that's another thing that can't be a coincidence. It's like, 10 minutes after I talked to him, I told him that everything's gonna be good with me and that I'm gonna be yeah. sober, that he just passed away, you know? Yeah. So, wow. I think the biggest blessing for me is being able to like, cause I feel like a lot of people, and like I am grieving, you know, everyone grieves in their own way, but I feel like a lot of people would just be a train wreck right now, you know what I mean, to follow. But I see like, like the good in it, you know what I mean? I think yeah. that's like the biggest thing for me in recovery is being able to see the good and even the most, you know, heartbreaking situations, you know? Yeah. And the fact that like, it gives me motivation to stay sober because like, I would be dishonoring him by getting high again, you know? So, it's been a crazy ride and wow. a lot of stuff's happened, but I'm here now, you know? So I can't sit in that guilt. Yeah. I'm just keeping it moving. Well, so, I'm sorry for your loss. Yeah, thank you. Um, and I, I also want to personally thank you for um, being willing to share that story. Yeah, of course. Uh, I saw really, it and I was like, something told me like, yeah. maybe someone's going through a similar situation and yeah. they could hear it. And yeah. that's another thing I learned in recovery is like all the crazy stuff that I've been through and the messed up stuff that I've done. Yeah. Like someone else has done that too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So when I get a year or two sober again more hopefully forever but yeah like when i share like my secrets in a room full of people and someone else has been scared to talk about that for a really long time they're like damn i'm not the only one that did that you know what i mean yeah. i'm not the only one that's been through that so that's yeah. my goal is to be able to like help people get through what i got through in, yeah. in sobriety you know so yeah. it's really cool well thank you for that and and that that is why we're doing this uh, episode as well as to come together as a community and to s share those personal stories right. to build each other up. I think we're ready. Okay. We good? All right. Let's start with an introduction. All right. Well, my name is Rebecca. Um, I'm alcoholic addict. I am from, I was born in Salt Lake, but grew up in Sweden. Um, Sweden. Wow. Yes, my mom's from wow. there. Um, I've had an addiction to heroin. I started off with, um, I was a pharmaceutical baby. Started off with pills that were prescribed to me from a doctor mm. at a very young age, I was 14. Oh, wow. And the first time I took them, I fell in love with opiates. Mm -hmm. And it's been a struggle ever since then. Uh, at 28, I turned to heroin, and I was an IV user, and I've had a terrible time with heroin. I can't have not been able to discover a way to actually stop using. When I am not locked up or now in treatment or something like that, mm -hmm. it's like, it doesn't matter if I'm happy, sad, yeah. depressed, angry, yeah. I just use to use. Yeah. And it's, it's taken a lot in my life. Yeah. I. What, um, what, uh, can I ask, is this your first time in treatment? Well, it's my first time in treatment not being incarcerated. I've done okay. cats in the Salt Lake County Jail yeah. twice, and I've been to prison as well, and I did the Excel program two times. Okay. So, so yeah. but um, what I'm hearing in that is your first time voluntarily? Mm -hmm. First time? Yes. Yeah. Well, Amazing. it's well, kind of voluntarily. I'm on parole right now. I got out of prison in July, and um, part of... When I went to the Board of Pardons, I actually asked if I could be placed in a program while I, yeah. when I was paroled. Yeah. Um, I don't have insurance, so my mom has actually offered to help pay because things yeah. have gone terribly wrong. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, there's unfortunately not enough resources, and I think thank you for bringing that point up because I think that's such uh, such an important topic to talk about in the community is um, those um, getting out of prison yes. and getting out of jail and being thrown right back into the same environment um, and the same the same people, places, and things right. um, that led to getting in in the first place. And not and that doesn't solve anything. Mm -hmm. It's not giving uh, giving you and giving our people uh, the, the help and the resources that right. are needed right. to be able to reintegrate. Mm -hmm. um, and so 
I, I'm happy to hear that um, that you've had that opportunity this time. I, um, it's it's amazing. Yeah. It really is. I love being sober. Yeah. Um, yeah. What uh, can I ask? What has been? Um, and I know that this is a personal question, and it may even be hard to to pinpoint to one thing. Um, what has been uh, one of the biggest struggles uh, through your addiction and recovery? Um, I guess one of the biggest struggles is I lost my fiance to a heroin overdose 10 years ago, and I wasn't able to process that. I'm sorry to hear that. I thank you. Uh, um, it's been difficult. I was emotionally shut down. Yeah. I think that's probably one of the biggest. I haven't been able to feel or live my life. My addiction has been, I've been in prison for my entire addiction. I mean, even being incarcerated is one thing, but having to live with this addiction, I've never been free, ever. Yeah. So I guess that's probably one of my biggest struggles. Yeah. I've, um, I've attempted suicide to try to stop using because yeah. I felt there was no other way. It's, I don't hate myself, don't want to die. Yeah. I hate my addiction. Yeah. What would be a message from that that you would want people who don't understand addiction to hear? Um, the biggest message that I want to, would want to send out is just take the time to listen to somebody who's suffering because it's not, usually addiction isn't something that we want to do and we're suffering and we need help and sometimes we can't ask for that help. So just listen and be there. Don't put them down. Don't try to force them into recovery. When they're ready, they'll come to you if they're willing. Yeah. But just to listen, yeah. that's all we need yeah. is to be able to be heard. Yeah, I I would absolutely agree. I think many times people just need to feel heard Yeah, and need to feel loved. Yeah, it's a very lonely place yeah. and dark. Yeah, yeah. Well, on the flip side of that, thank you for being here to celebrate recovery with us. No problem. Um, thank you for taking a few minutes to share your own story um, and, and to put the message out there. Right.